Morning everyone, so on this Monday morning, as you can see, we are back with the rain. We've moved away from the snow, the small amount of snow that we had last week, icy conditions, uh, and we're now back to the rain. So it's raining quite heavily at the minute. It's hard to know which is better. At least last week with the icy conditions, it was dry overhead, and if you went out to do something, uh, even though it was quite cold, you were able to get it done without getting wet. Now it's back heavy rain again, and uh, not ideal for doing anything. But anyway, uh, what are we doing today? Well, we are going to try and move uh, these trailers that are all parked here on the, the small silage base. Uh, we're going to try and make space for the beet chopper. Beet chopper is going to go in the back right hand corner. Uh, the beet chopper is back behind me here. I don't know, you might be just about able to see it through the back window. So, uh, yeah, we're going to try and just get it into position. We're going to be picking up beet possibly tomorrow or Wednesday. So, um, yeah, just want to have everything ready and get ready for, for doing a bit of beet chopping. Uh, there is a pile of dung, you can just see it here towards the front of the the front right of the, the small silage trailer. Uh, that dung, we're going to have to try and load it onto the small tipping trailer behind. Uh, we'll maybe put the rest of it in a little dung pile that we have uh, here beside the yard. So, yeah, let's get going on it. I have a couple of cubes that I want to move here as well, cubes that we have for water. So we'll move them as well and we'll try and get some of the stuff shuffled around and get uh, get we'll have to do a bit of tidying in the air just get everything ready so let's get out Alright, so we got all the cubes moved out of the way, so that freed up the space around the beet chopper. Now we're moving on to uh, moving the trailers that are all down in on the silage base. I uh, actually had forgotten that the, you can see the slurry mixer is parked in there at the very back of this trailer, so I didn't actually see it. I'd kind of forgotten that it was there. Uh, we usually park it a little further down the yard, so uh, it had to be moved as well. So just one extra thing that had to be moved out of the way. Um, yeah, so small heron trailer here. I have it now on the front of the teleporter. Uh, putting a trailer on the front of the teleporter like this is... Uh, it's. It, it just the the trailer is very maneuverable with the teleporter. The fact the teleporter has a four wheel steer, it's a four wheel steer on it. Um, yeah, you can put the trailer into places that you'd never get it with uh, um, with with a tra with it hooked on the back of a tractor. So, um, yeah, it has its advantages. Uh, so that's one trailer moved out of the way. Uh, I think we move on to I think it's the low loader we go for now next. Yes, we go for the low loader now, and this is the first time I've actually had the low loader hitched onto the the teleporter like this, um, and uh, I noticed now. See, when I'm reversing back here, I should have kept it a wee bit closer to the the bags of fertilizer for longer, and then and then tail it round, but uh, because it does, it just leaves it a wee bit tighter than what it should have been. But I will get it around anyway. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, first time I just hooked onto the the low loader like this, and uh, the three axles, uh, there's a bit more ground friction with it while when turning, uh, just tires grabbing or gripping on the ground, than uh, than the side of the trailers. Uh, you could just find the pull on the on the teleporter when you were when you were turning it. Now. Look, it's not it's not doing any harm, but uh, it's just something to note. You could find that extra the extra axle in it, uh, did make a bit of a difference. Uh, another mistake I made here. I didn't go back far enough. I should have straightened the low loader up a little bit more. 
uh, in my defense it's absolutely teeming rain here it's not shown on the i don't know why it's not shown on the camera of the drone uh, anytime i've flown in the wet weather before uh, you're getting a, a spray on the lens but it, it just didn't show here so uh visibility wasn't great out the mirrors of the teleporter but uh, i make it work anyway i take a couple of stabs at it here going backwards and forwards just to get it uh, to get the tail so enough of a tail swing that i missed the the silent trailer uh, that i've just moved uh, that i missed that when coming back um but yeah, got, got it in anyway. It's quite tight, tight coming in here between the feeding boxes and the side of the trailer, but there's enough room for it. And I just reverse back uh, and hook it off then beside the, the second side of the trailer. Just you can see now, I just drop it off here. Uh, and it just means that it's out of the way now as well. So uh, that leaves one trailer left, uh, just the small tipping trailer. Uh, and what I do is I... Uh, I just move it around now, I you can see when I hitch onto it, uh, I pull it around into position and uh, just get it into position then for loading dung onto it uh, because that dung that's there has to be moved. Uh, I also have to scrape uh, scrape the whole yard as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's just a small layer of old silage on the bottom of the yard and it actually scrapes out very well. The fact that it's wet uh, played into uh, played into my hands because uh, as soon as I put the bucket down and scrap it, it just lifted everything. It lifted against the wall and no issue at all. I got it loaded into the trailer. So uh, what I'll do is now uh, I'm going to uh, just I'll put a bit of music to the next part of it just when I'm moving the dung uh, and loading the dung up. And uh, yeah, we come back then and uh, we can see how we, we progress on after that. So we have this all sorted now. We've everything cleaned up. Uh, you can see uh, the floor, which had bits of silage there from uh, when we finished taking the, all the silage out of this pit. Uh, that is all now scrap and clean. There was a few bits of plastic uh, laying around. We've that all sorted. Dung, as you've seen, is all moved. And we're ready now. We can get the bee chopper. Now, the location of the bee chopper, where am I going to put it? Well, there's two ways that we can put it. We can put it with uh, along in this corner with the David Brown then just on the left hand side of it so along the back wall or we can put it here 
uh, and put the David Brown uh, in the top corner and it, it's six of one half a dozen of another i still want to be able to put some trailers in here at least at least the low loader anyway uh, and by putting the if you put it along this wall and the low loaders here we can tip the beat in the center uh, or the other option is then if we put in the back wall trailer is here and we can tip the beat here and we just have to drive around it um, i'm almost inclined to i think we'll put it on the back wall i'll see i'll try it on the back wall if it looks like it's all going to work okay uh, with the trailer there as well we'll leave it there we'll just see a uh, chopper is you can see it it's just parked here so the ground is slippy we can get the fox just in under it there at the front put a wee lift on it and we'll pull it back and it should come back okay so i'll put the drone up try and get a bit of footage of it it's raining a little bit so hopefully it doesn't affect the rain isn't splashing onto the lens of the camera we'll see how it works out so let's get at it okay so here we are we'll try and get this moved now uh the fox are on yeah, we're just sliding it in now there's quite a strong frame on this beach up also uh, never too worried about it pulling apart right now just sliding it around um, and for the most part it slides fairly well the one thing you have to watch for is you might have noticed there it took a little bit of a dance uh, the fact there's quite a large uh, hopper on it it uh, just means it's a little bit top heavy so yeah, you just want to watch not to, to land it over on its backside, which it's very simple, it can be done. Um, yeah, just have to reposition here now a few times as I'm dragging it back in. Uh, the fact that the ground is a little bit wet, is it's, it's helped me because it just means there's a bit less friction on it when you're sliding it along. So it's it slides along very well. Um, yeah, this, this part of it's pretty easy. Now, when we get on to the actual silage base itself, it's a little bit more tricky. It just doesn't want to move as freely. Uh, I suppose over the years, uh, as the silage is put into onto the base, the or the into the pit, uh, it has just taken a little bit of a layer of the concrete up. There's a little bit more stones exposed, and it just has it just causes a little bit more friction. But you'll see that now in a second. Now it's just repositioned the drone here, uh, just so that we're looking uh, a bit better at what we're doing. Um, but yeah, you can see it slides along quite nicely. Um, now we're just coming now onto the the base itself. You can see straight away it's changed the way it's moving. It's just it straightened itself up. Um, now. <sighs> As I said, I was contemplating now whereabouts I was going to put uh, the chopper and I've went, uh, I slide it around, I'm kind of just sussing it out as I'm sliding it around to see which would look best uh, and I end up going for the back wall. I think it it will work out okay. We can tip, uh, tip the, we're not, look, we're not going to have a lot of, a lot of beef, we're only going to be feeding beef to some of the cattle so I would imagine that a load of beef will probably do us something in the region of about three weeks maybe uh, maybe even slightly more than that initially so uh, yeah one one load as it's tipped uh, there at the front we'd be able to walk our way around it uh, but <clears throat> yeah so yeah I kind of just sat it here to see what it looks like uh, and it wasn't going to be that big of an advantage. Uh, my thinking on it was that if I put the David Brown now in there at the front of it, into the corner of the pit, uh, and tip the, the, the beat in the centre, uh, the beat would, would end up, when you'd be scooping it up, some of it would end up all in around the David Brown. So, uh, And another thing too, sometimes when chopping beet, there's little bits of beet flies, flies up and... Um, into the air and uh, it would end up landing on the silage pit and you could end up then drawing vermin maybe uh, to the pit itself so that, that's another thing you know the crows maybe rats uh, start looking for the sugar beet that has been chopped on the plastic and it causes a whole other issue so uh, that's that's another uh, was another part of my thinking on sliding into the back wall um but yeah, just have to keep at it now. It takes a couple of, uh, you take a couple of runs at it on each side and just shimmy it back. Uh, as I say, it's not just sliding as nicely as it was on the other concrete, but we do get there and get it into position.
All right, so we're standing inside because it's absolutely teeming down with rain now. 4.30 in the evening, uh, it feels like the clocks uh, have went the other way for about a half an hour compared to last week. It was bright till quarter past five last week and it's starting to get dark here now already. But yeah, you can see the chopper is in place. Uh, low load off, we just put it in tight again the far side. So there's enough room for the David Brown now to go in. Uh, and we'll not put it on until the we'll not put it on until the, the, the beat arrives. Uh, we'll tip the beat here now in this front corner uh, and we can then just drive around it for, for putting in the beat and taking it out then and putting it in the feeder. So yeah, next part of this video you will see will be the David Brown going on to the chopper and uh, the, the beat being being tipped here in position. So